casting procedure for the DRAFO. In this phase of the process, we are going to be casting the patient for a DRAFO. Now, it is very important to remember that during the evaluation process, you memorized or wrote down the alignment that was appropriate for that patient. It is very important that during the casting process, you try to get as close to that as you possibly can. Our rec recommended casting setup is as follows. We recommend using nylon, two layers with a cut strip in between, ideally marking the medial and lateral malleolus, the base of the fifth, the center of the first and fifth med heads, the navicular, and most importantly, the fibular head. To begin rolling the fiberglass, it is important to start at the ball and go around. If you're using a soft cast, twice around. If you're using a firm cast, once around. We're then going to go down around the heel and up around the toe. Again, on a firm cast, once. On a soft cast material, twice. The ideal here, and this casting technique was developed over a custom shoe casting technique. It allows us to get the intimate profile of the toes. So when you go to fit your orthosis, there's very little work on your end as far as adjusting and fine tuning. And we just continue wrapping up the foot. You do not want to stretch that much. Lay the fiberglass on nice and easy. In the case of our patient here, he is going to be receiving a mid-profile orthosis, so I do not need to go all the way up. Very, very important with fiberglass. If you get any wrinkles from roping, you need to really rub it in. Really rubbing it in well. The rubbing gets rid of the rope and also prevents the cast from coming apart. As you're rubbing it in, slowly start finding R1, feeling your heel, supinating the fore, forefoot as required, and bringing them up. One of the things to note is if you have a patient that drops substantially during this process, once you get that position, adduct the forefoot slightly to even create a more rigid bony alignment lock. This will prevent them from collapsing and require less force of the brace to hold them there. Once you get the casting material on, it is very, very important to get the R1, the vertical heel, and the forefoot supination in alignment as close as you possibly can. If you have a child that is going to fight you, then it is important to get the hind foot vertical. If you need to fudge, fudge on plantar flexion. That is very easy to adjust, but get the hind foot forefoot relationship locked in. Worry about the plantar flexion, dorsiflexion angle last, or R1. Now that our cast is set, it's time to remove the cast. Importantly, draw hash marks across where you will be opening the cast so the cast can be applied and resealed in the appropriate alignment. With the technique we're going to be using here, we're using a hook knife down a special channel with a slot. We start with the scissors, clean down. And apply the hook knife. We're not ready to remove the cast. Take any wrinkles out of the cast and seam it back up. Important that when you have the cast off, that you either tape it or seal it before you ship it off so it does not deform. A wet cast like this thrown in a box will flatten out and we lose the shape of the cast. 
as you can see, with what we tried to achieve, there's a vertical heel to the cast. And you can see the four foot alignment based off of that with this being slightly supinated. Check your cast to make sure the alignment is what you want. And you can check on the order form whether or not you want us to change it or leave it as is based on your evaluation. Let's review our cast. It is imperative that you get the casting alignment as close to the required alignment as possible. In this case, we are looking for a vertical heel if the patient will attain that. We must then look at the forefoot to make sure its alignment to the hind foot is appropriate for our patient. Is it supinated or is it pronated? We then look at the first catch alignment or angle and make sure that that matches up what our evaluation did or we need to state that on the work order to have it corrected.